Hi, everybody. David Dilling from Mark Square here today with a special guest all the way from California, Scott Citron. Do I say your name correctly? Yes, you did, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Citron, Citron. Depends how you feel. How I yeah, feel. right. So yeah. I try to make sure somebody understands the spelling. I'll say Citron, which is actually more correct. But uh, I, I go by Citron. Citron. Okay, great, Scott. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to be with us, Scott, sir. Yeah, uh, Mark Square flight check user, pre flighting, and he has a rich background. I just saw he's working with his own company for 33 years and nine months. How's that for, you know, uh, longevity? Yeah. All, all divisible by three. So, um, yeah. Scott, maybe you start off just before we get jump into your workflows and all that about who you are, what you know, what you do, and how you ended up where you are. Okay. Uh, I'll try to make it brief. I started out, uh, well, I always had an interest in, in art. And uh, as a kid, was drawing and painting and stuff like that. And then I kind of fell into, my dad was an advertising person in the apparel business. And so I also had kind of an advertising graphic design sensibility that I got from him. In early 93, I spent a year in Berlin working on a television series. I was a producer on an American series that was all shot in Berlin and Ironically, it was never the series was never sh broadcast in the United States. It never made a U.S. sale, but apparently it showed all over the world. Anyway, so I came back to to Santa Monica, California, where we were living at the time, and um, a friend of mine had, was getting into desktop publishing. He worked for a comic book company, and they were converting from analog to digital. And he had this all this software, and he knew a lot about this merging technology, this um, desktop publishing thing. <laughs> and I went out and um, I bought a, a, a Mac uh, and what I thought was a huge expensive monitor, a sunny 17 inch monitor, which must have cost $1,200 at the time. You know, now you get them for like $12. <laughs> and, um, and, he, and, and he put the software on the machine and I started to use uh, Illustrator and PageMe. And Illustrator just blew my mind um, because it was so fast. And um, PageMaker, I, I learned along the way because I needed to learn some way to make publications. Right. And I struggled with Photoshop because at the time the computers were very slow and Photoshop didn't even have layers. Yeah. Right. And it only had one and two. Do you remember? Uh, I just remember it taking a yeah. long time for anything to happen. Right. So I was very frustrated with Photoshop and I kind of put that onto the, the back burner. But anyway, I got really into this um, doing design work on a computer and and uh, eventually uh, it turned into kind of a little business. But along the way, I got another TV job in the late 90s, 97 in New York. I had to be in New York City. So that was kind of a great opportunity. My wife was born and raised in New York City. My dad was born and raised in New York City. And so we moved to Manhattan. And, uh, and I worked on a show, a couple shows there um, for a few years and was doing some design stuff along the way. And eventually the show was canceled, like most TV shows. And I kept doing design work and suddenly friend of mine said, there's this thing called Adobe InDesign and you should check it out. Well, at that time I was working in Work Express for a publisher in Greenwich Village and I got this thing called InDesign and because I was very familiar with Illustrator, it was very easy at the time for me to pick it up. Shortly, shortly thereafter, some people at Adobe heard about me somehow through this publisher that I was I was doing a book for a publisher and these three women showed up at, at our apartment in New York and they sat down and they said, okay, show us what you know. And it was like a piano recital. They sat behind me and I did some stuff. I showed them some stuff in InDesign and they went, well, you're pretty good with this. And I said, yeah, you know, I'm pretty good. And they said, well, uh, we're planning a big push and we need somebody to, to go out and work with the public and teach InDesign and sh showcase it, demo it. Would you be interested in being that person? And then I said, yeah, that sounds kind of fun. And I started doing this stuff and InDesign exploded. 
everybody wanted InDesign. And I must have done, I think I did about 25 demos in New York City and in um, Connecticut uh, in for InDesign. And everyone was really hot to get on it. And so we formed a New York InDesign user group. And my whole life revolved around InDesign. Wow. Wow. And so that was the point where pre-flight started to come into play because it, people used to say, oh, well, you, you know, if you use those transparency features, you can't print that stuff. And um, there was a lot of controversy in the early days. Oh, yeah. Everything was about airlines were problems, all kinds right, of stuff. Right. And InDesign, I didn't have any built-in pre-flight. And so flight check was really pretty much the only game in town. Uh, I remember it from the old days. It, it used to crack me up because when flight check opened, the, the eagle would fly through and go. Yeah, right? exactly like that almost. <laughs> and um, so I, that's when I first knew about it. And uh, over the years, things changed and I changed, but I kept doing training and I kept doing design and I worked primarily in the InDesign and Illustrator and then Photoshop and suddenly I loved Photoshop and uh, all these things that needed to be checked before they went to the printer and um, so that that's really where it all started and then today um, I, I still use it I still I use it in concert with the built-in pre-flight that's in in design, they both have their pluses and minuses. Sure. And um, but if I need a really robust pre-flight, uh, I usually tend to go to Flight Check and and use that. And the interface is much improved. This was one of my big complaints in the early days: is it was just a lot of information. Now it's a lot of information, but it's nicely organized. It's nicely um, designed. It's easy to use. Um, I mean, it's really great. It's a fantastic tool, and Thank for you. people that really need to know that kind of information and 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 access it easily, it's I don't know really anything else. Right, it's like an X-ray. It can look inside the files, yeah. lickety split, and tell you what's going on. So, right. Um, but most designers, you know, don't know much about pre-flight. If anything, that's part of the problem. Is designers like you know? I just want to make pretty pictures. Well, yeah. ultimately, somebody has to be able to print those pretty pictures, and you don't want to get the printer calling you and saying a font is missing or a, you know, there's a PMS um, color in here. Or yeah, whatever. extra plate or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So this is you know what Flight Check does. So uh, right, and um, the like the new version. There's now a preview, which I'm um, yes, which, which is, is pretty great. Neat. Yeah, I mean for a PDF, that's not such a huge deal, but it's. What's cool even with the PDF, it actually shows you where the problem is, highlights it. It, it does. It yeah. puts a little yellow box over the area, and it's fast. It's really fast. It really is. And that was something else people want. We had a problems layout in the old flight check, but it was really like wireframe and oh. wasn't fast. And yeah. Oh, it's very sophisticated now. I mean, it's come a long way. Yeah, thank you. And and also, I was very much aware of Sparksware in the early days of InDesign. Because Marksware was the only company that had a plugin that converted Quark Express documents to InDesign. That's right, and that and that was huge, huge. Yep, no, it was. Huge. And you know what's amazing, Scott? It still is pretty. Is it really? It's still one of our best sellers. It sells every day, day after day, because there's there just must be millions and millions of Quark documents out there. I guess. I mean, Quark still ex exists. Of course. They still ex there are still existing customers as well, for sure. Yeah, I don't know anybody that uses it anymore, but I know yeah. in, in Europe, it's I think it has a pretty good stronghold in certain areas. Certain area, yeah. yeah. I heard I heard like Australia education market's still big, and that, like you said, some places in Europe, some publishers. Yeah. Hey, if it works, why right. why rock the boat? Right, right. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, I've looked at the... I mean, Work Express doesn't resemble what it used to in the old days. It's a complete, uh, you know... InDesign forced it to step up to the plate, and it, and it did. Yeah. But unfortunately for them, InDesign is part of a larger thing called Adobe. And, you know, of course, you know, with Adobe, you get 
all these other products that all talk to each other and work very nicely together. So, right. Create a suite. Now the creative cloud, of course. And uh, right. that was, yeah, for one, one right. nice price. Right. Yeah. And I know that you also have a plugin that I believe or an app that converts um, Acrobat PDFs to InDesign. That's right. Yeah. You, you probably want, that, if you haven't tried that, you want to check that one out because that's amazing. Yeah. That I could see where that would be very handy because when I've had to do that, I always do it in Illustrator and it's somewhat painful and it's usually just a one page document. It's not a big deal. But if right. you had a if you had a, P, a multi page PDF and you needed to work on it and to be able to convert it to an InDesign document is really a pretty incredible. Yeah. Like, like a lot of people, the you know, designers will get a grab uh, corporation will say, here's the PDF. We don't have any uh, anything else. We want this more or less with some changes in. Mm -hmm. So now you just push a button and it it's yeah. you might have to do some touching up, of course, because PDF is a different animal sure. and right. but it's it's pretty amazing and just yeah, saved yeah. a lot of people, yeah. So Yeah. No, I know Mark's where it's carved out a pretty interesting niche for itself in, in sort of specialty areas of, of design. Yeah. Reading the file formats is what it comes down to. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Um yeah. so what was what was like uh do you remember the first time you ever saw flight check? You had like a, uh, like, I was like, wow, that was, you know, do you remember the first time using it, so to speak, or? Vaguely, yeah. I just, yeah. well, of course, I still remember the Eagle. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I could never forget that. That's, I, I'm surprised you guys actually took it out of the product in a way, because. We've been at, yeah. Yeah. But no, the first time I used it um, must have been 30 years ago. Yeah, yeah. So it was a, yeah. Okay. And look at, at, again, it was a different product. And the interface was not very friendly, and it did all, a lot of stuff, but um, it was much harder to work with. Right. In those, in those days. I used to tell people, turn off all your ground controls and then only turn on the, the three or five things that are really needed for you yeah. to check. And then it was, yeah. but yeah. yeah. And then with that question, so uh, do you, I mean, how do you set up your ground? Do you have like a certain set of ground controls you use or you? Are you just checking and yeah, seeing I've, what you I've customized it a little, a little bit, but not not too much. I mean, the right. basic default setup is mostly works great. Right. I rarely have to uh, to change it. Right. Yeah, but you have a lot of experience. So you kind of know what you're looking at, and yeah, yeah right. So sort of like a publishing company that might want to just narrow it down to a few things. And yeah, really... just make sure the fonts are there, and make sure that uh, you know that there's not a Pantone. I I just had a project recently where. Um, I had registration. It was an, there was an ad in a magazine that I'm working on, and the ad apparently had registration black in it, and the printer kicked it back. Well, it was a PDF. I mean, I wouldn't have known. I wouldn't have known that. Otherwise, you look at a PDF, you open an Acrobat, looks fine. And frankly, Acrobat's production tools, which are very robust, are also yeah. very confusing. Very, and like, yeah. It's you have to drill down and yeah. It's, it's I don't know why they haven't cleaned that up, except that maybe people that really use it for that are used to it. But um, I mean, is I remember a product called Pit Stop, which sure is that's are they still around? Yeah, 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 yeah. They they did a, a really good job with with PDFs. Yeah, they're very good too. Edit for years. Yeah, and they edit PDFs and. They're a plug into Acrobat, and the beauty of Flight Check is it's just a standalone, so you can drop yeah. anything on it and get it. Get right. Yeah. So right, yeah. right. But Flight Check found the registration black. Wow. In, in the uh, in the ad, in the PDF. Yeah. For and Acrobat probably could have found it if I'd known how to use it, but it would. I mean, to that level. Right. It's very complex. Right. And they, you know, there's fix ups and there's all this stuff in it. And it's, uh, it's a funny product i've done a lot of work with the acrobat and the acrobat team mm. i just recently did s a bunch of tutorials and things for them but um those production areas are kind of a dark cave in the back of acrobat well acrobat in general i mean it's got a little bit off get off the it but acrobat in general has a totally different way it operates when they have, when you save on a document it has a totally different dialogue than in design illustrator or photoshop right it's right. it's uh and i'm sure there's reasons for it yeah, it doesn't quite know. It's, it's. I, I always call it the, the, the application that doesn't quite know what it is. Yeah. You know, because it does so many things. Yeah. 
So it so does a lot. Really, yeah. It does a ton of stuff, which is kind of a blessing and a curse at the same time. Right. Exactly. Right. Well, yeah. That's with a lot of Adobe products. They all do a lot of stuff. Actually, yeah. you drill yeah. down in, you know, right. well, you know, as a Adobe certified, yeah. uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The other ones I, I, I'm okay with, but, um, uh, and Acrobat is an indispensable product. Yeah. And they keep trying to make it easier and more user friendly. And they keep telling me we want it to be more you know, like Microsoft looking. And I don't know. Yeah. And, wow. And they, and then all I hear from people is, well, I got the new Acrobat and they moved everything. It's now, <laughs> you know, they, the, the tools used to be over here. Now they're over there. Yeah. Yeah. But we still use it. Like you said, it's, it's got so many things in there. So, um, okay, back to flight check. Now, what's let's yeah. like a, what's a typical way? Well, not only flight check. What's a typical way you would pre-flight a job, and and how would flight check fit in or not fit in? Or yeah, you know, how does it how does it how does that work? Well, in general, um, as I said, I use the built-in InDesign pre-flight, but that is only as good as the profile that you build, right? Which is really true for flight check as well right but there's limited yeah. checks in design so you can't right you, know. you have to tell it what to look for it doesn't you know it doesn't know that right that spot colors are bad right or, so uh usually what i'll do is i will use the built-in pre-flight in InDesign, and if i still have a suspicion or if i want like a second opinion that's when yeah. i'll open it in the flight check and if flight check gives me, you know, ninety seven percent or eight or whatever, then I'm satisfied. I'm, I'm happy. Uh, I know that I can convert to PDF from there if I want to. I can export as various other file formats, TIFFs and JPEGs and Bing's and all that. Right. So sometimes I'll use that, and it is very fast. I mean, that's yeah, something I really appreciate. That's. Um, it's such a pleasure to use. Yeah, yeah. Very interesting. You like that this as using Flightcheck as a second opinion, and I, yeah. I, I think a lot of yeah. people do that nowadays. It's uh -huh. a very good point. Yeah, and another way a lot of people use it is just as before they even open it in in design or Illustrator, whatever it is, they just drop yeah. out Flightcheck and just get a get a get a get a look right. at what what they're up against. You know, <laughs> right, right, and and Illustrator doesn't really have pre flight. Not per se, not, not not like right. Yeah. So, so to check Illustrator files and Illustrator used to not have packaging. Right. It does now you have yeah, but uh, Flight Check also does packaging, which is great. Right. Right. So this is where it really and yeah. we're also looking at like an InDesign file or Illustrator file with placed native yes. Photoshop or placed InDesign within InDesign or Illustrator within right. InDesign, right. and those are tricky areas where Adobe does need to look into yeah. so you know exactly. um, so all right so now do you have any do you have like a story or a you know a tale from where pre-flight saved the day well i guess you just told us one actually <laughs> yeah the registration yeah so right yeah right so that's like yeah i mean i mean just a couple of weeks ago i had this uh this problem where i sent the files to the printer and and i thought everything was fine and uh a couple of the pages kicked back and it was because of these ads um one of them had a spot color in it, although it wasn't used, but it had it in the definition. Right. So I had to convert that to CM, CMYK. Right. And, um, and then I had this registration black problem. Yeah. From an ad that came from the client. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. Are there any, uh, like, are there any particular problems that you, you're getting, you're seeing time and time again, or are they just, just depends on? It's the same. It's the same stuff. Miss, you know, missing farms. Yes, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, InDesign is pretty good about flagging, right? Stuff like that, right? Uh, which it used to not be. And when you make a PDF now out of InDesign, it will tell you if there's overset text or right. if there's a missing font, which is great. And it didn't used to do that. No. Nope. So, it will cover the basic problems that someone might run into. But when you have something that's a little bit different. Maybe if you're using um, a, a spot color as a varnish plate or something like that, uh, you know, these kinds of things that are a little more tricky are where the problems 
right turn up the big falls again yeah. yeah right and i don't do that much of that kind of stuff but um but they occasionally i do and uh and then i also work in a complete rgb uh workflow too i don't convert any anything to cmyk except when on output right right so which surprisingly i mean i ran into somebody just recently who was still doing cmyk conversion and i said why are you doing that he said well what do you mean that's that's what you're supposed to do yeah i said i said nobody does that anymore i said adobe is years ago said just leave it in rgb it's easier the files are smaller you can do more with an rgb file in photoshop you know our cmyk you can't a lot of filters things don't work this was compl- this was news to the to this person and he'd been working in in this area for probably at least 20 years yeah well, that's a problem because that's what they used to be like you know everything had to be cmyk and yeah. so that's probably in his uh you know oh yeah i mean i learned i learned that yeah too but it was only through my association with indesign and adobe where the word came down hey you don't guys have to do that anymore yeah yeah well it's interesting you about the pre-flight problems there was in 1998 i remember we had this powerpoint of the 10 most common pre-flight problems from i think it was gt G- G- GTAF or GATF, some American uh, organization, graphic yeah. arts set in the oh, yeah, the graphic arts. GATF. Yeah. yeah. And if you look at those 10 problems, there's yeah. today ex- almost exactly the same. Missing font is maybe now non embedded, uh, low res, but it's all the same type of stuff. Yeah. There. Yeah. Low res images. Yeah. Yeah. People say, I got this off the internet. Can I use it? Uh, uh, well, maybe, maybe not. Yeah. Um, and that's just a, question of education yeah the part of the problem is that people aren't formally educated it's like they get a job here's your desk here's your computer now go to work and then they they ask the guy next to them like how do you do this stuff right uh i mean i used i used to teach at the university level um and the kids that i taught they didn't have a clue they didn't know anything about anything and it made me feel good because I was doing this as a service. Yeah, and they were and they were very appreciative of it. But so many people get into this business just because there's an empty chair there and somebody needs to fill it. Yeah, yeah. That, but you've done a lot of different things, Scott. That you should write a book. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I've written a couple of books. Oh, and... oh, you have for yeah for Adobe. Oh, for Adobe. I, yeah, I yeah. Co-wrote, I co-wrote a book, an illustrator book, with a friend of mine who's now an Adobe employee. Great guy. And um, and then I ran the InDesign user group in New York City yeah. for over 10 years. And um, oh, yeah. yeah. Here's one for you, Scott. They're talking yeah. about, now this is about five or six years ago. We fixed bad InDesign files, by the way, with yes. our ID marks uh, yes. program. We can fix about 85% of the time. And if that doesn't work, our engineers will look at it and they can fix often things. We fix stuff that even Adobe can't fix, even with their new uh, cert, you know. But this one guy, he had a, you know, we always try to figure out well, what's going wrong. How are you getting bad files? Well, he was taking, and I don't know if you can still do this in InDesign. You could take a picture box in InDesign. You could have your Safari or whatever browser open. Right. You could take a picture from Safari on the internet, yeah. drop it in your InDesign picture box, yeah. and it would populate it. And you'd think like, ooh, yeah. look at that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You can still do that. Yeah. So he made this huge book. Yeah. And then it went cruff because it was, wait, it was like, Everything yeah. was embedded anyway. Right. It was Yeah, yeah. People again, education. You know, people think, Oh, here's it's a picture. What's the problem? Here, I'll just <laughs> drag and drop it on it. And there it is. I guess it's fine. Yeah. So, um yeah, I guess my advice is well my advice is uh get an education somehow. Whatever <laughs> right. it takes. What I did was um how I really learned to use most Adobe products was through um, a series of books that Adobe Press still publishes called Classroom in a Book. Hmm. And it's a series of books on each application and they update it period quite often. And it used to come with a CD-ROM in the back or a yeah. DD. And all the lesson material was on these optical discs. And so you would go through the book and if you actually did the exercises, followed along using the material on the disc, 
you would really learn a lot. And I, that's how I learned uh, Illustrator and Page Maker and InDesign and Photoshop. Uh, I, I went through, I was very systematic about it. And if I didn't understand something, I'd go back a page or two. And it sounds like I'm patting myself on the back, but in a way I am. Yeah. Because I knew that it was the only way. Otherwise, if you just kind of wing it, uh, you'll end up like this guy who I just was mentioning that didn't know that you don't have to work and convert all images into CMYK. Right. Right. So I highly recommend that series. I mean, it's one, the thing is everybody wants it now. Yeah. And so that's why YouTube is, is great because you can get it now, but you're only going to get it in drips. And right. You're only getting that one little micro thing and not the whole, right. how you got there. Sure. Yeah. 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 So Absolutely. it's very important to, to know what you're doing and, and spend some time learning it correctly and you will be rewarded for your efforts. Yep. Yeah. You really will. Uh, two more questions. The first one yep. is, I think I know the answer, but would you recommend flight check to other potential users? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not for everybody. Um, depends on your level of, of, well, whether you're the guy who's actually handing it off to the the printer or right. the service bureau or whatever. Lots of places, of course, agencies, they have studio people whose job it is to take your file and to pre-flight it and check it and make sure everything is is working right and so if you're in that situation you may not need it um but for someone like me who's a freelance person that worked i'm a one-man shop i have to have um i have to be confident that the file that i'm handing over is problem free right and in effect so should everyone even in the larger studios they should take the extra yeah. insurance and making sure that what they're sending is, you know, right. Or what they're right. getting in, you know, for right. advertising. Else, take advantage of the built-in pre-flight in InDesign because right. so many designers don't even know what that is. They right. haven't even heard of it. No, it's like, oh right. yeah, it's been here for 10 years now or something. Oh yeah. Probably even longer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at least use that. Yeah. But if you need something more industrial strength, then flight check is, is the only way to go. Right. Cool. Thank you. And the last question, of course, is where can people learn more information about uh, what, what you do, Scott? I have a very old website, which I'm, I'm sorry about. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm the shoemaker that has, you know, old sh shoes or whatever it is. You're like a I, printer who doesn't have print business cards, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I do have another website called uh, adobepowerhour.com, which is a website that was set up as a, as a way to get people to, to teach people. So you could go, you could see who I am, what I teach, what I do, and you can book time with me. And my whole thing was like in an hour, I could teach you a ton of stuff in just one hour. And so if you're interested, it's adobepowerhour.com and go there and check it out. And all it's all right there. You can pay for classes, you can schedule classes, you can do all this stuff online. And, uh, there's a bunch of examples of my work and stuff there as well. Excellent. Yeah, I could imagine. So many times I get tips from uh, trainers like like you, and uh, you guys just know so much stuff that you just you yeah. know, cut out all the flack that would take me, right. well, not even days, maybe even years yeah. to figure it out. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, well, there's a lot of misinformation out there, and there's a lot to know. I mean, yeah. it's a constant job just to keep up with, you know, all these programs. I mean, if you're in uh, and an expert in InDesign and Photoshop and Illustrator and God knows what else. Yes, it's, it's it's a battle. Yeah, so, and I'll yeah, that's what I do. And I'll also put a link to your LinkedIn, Scott. You have a lot of great information there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I really appreciate your time on this Friday uh, morning for you. Yeah, and I, I'm happy to do it. You're welcome, and have a great day. Have a great weekend. Same to you, and. Uh, Whatever you say in, in Dutch. Tootzines. Uh, say that again. Tootzines. Tootzines? Tootzines. Till again. Till, oh, till again. Till the next that's time. Like, uh, that's like uh, uh, bespalt in German. Yeah. 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 Uh, I speak a little bit, not, not enough, uh, but spending a year in Germany, uh, 
I learned a lot of stuff. Yeah. And I know there's a very close relationship between Dutch and German. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of words are very similar and, but a lot of things are totally different, but uh, anyway, so you have a great day. Thank you again. My pleasure. Okay, Dave. All right. Get approved. Get content. Be creative. Marksware.com.